E-S-U. It's what we do. Hello, my name is Heidi Rethmeyer, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about instructional coaching at ESU 8. So what is or isn't instructional coaching? So maybe you've heard the coaching term before when you've heard of a reading coach or an MTSS coach, but what do they do? What exactly is their job? So instructional coaching really lies on a continuum. You can have coaches that are more directive in their work or coaches that are more reflective in their work. And their goal for each of those is a little different and how they go about interacting with teachers is also very different. So we're going to start on the more directive side of instructional coaching and that particular support function we call calibrating. So the purpose of instructional coaching that is more directive or calibrating is really to assess or to judge or to rate. Um, oftentimes uh, coaches may come in for fidelity checks. Again, that's more of a, a calibrating. And the decision making lies with the evaluator or the coach. And at ESU8, this type of coaching may fall under MTSS coaching. Now as we move to the right on the continuum, you would see some more consulting. So typically this happens when we have someone come in with expertise in a particular area. Uh, and again, the intended outcome for really all of these is to increase the knowledge and skills and, and the practices uh, of our educators. So the person coming in is the expert and they are going to consult with the teacher or the administrator. So perhaps you want someone to come in that has a great, more ex a great deal more experience in tech integration or some tech tools that you want to incorporate and you need some new ideas. We know uh, as educators that you often don't have time to really spend looking at the latest research or what's the, uh, the neatest thing that's come out lately in terms of tech integration. So you want someone to come in that, that has that time and that training to share that uh, and that expertise with you. So at ESU8, that type of coaching again might be MTSS, or maybe we bring in a tech integrationist, or maybe you just need some support with content area. Um, maybe perhaps uh, the new social study standards came out and you need someone who's more experienced in that in some of the instructional shifts that go along with those standards and how that might look in your classroom. And in that case, you might bring in an instructional coach that acts as a consultant. The third type, again moving more to the right, is the collaborating. And in this particular case, we have two or more individu individuals that are, just like it sounds, collaborating. They are sharing equally ideas um, and learning together. Um, and again, this can fall under tech integration or content area. And this may even happen naturally in your district where you have two teachers uh, that are coll collaborating together on a lesson or a concern they have in their classroom. And again, we are hoping that this is going to build skills and knowledge for both individuals involved. And then as we move to the right, the furthest right in terms of our instructional coaching continuum, we have the reflecting support function. Okay, now the purpose of this is really to help the individual of the educator to reflect on their own practices, uh, reflect on their data, what the data is telling them, um, and then to hopefully make some decisions about moving forward. So the person being coached is the one that is making the decision. The coach is there to facilitate that reflective practice and that reflective conversation. Ultimately, we want the person being coached to feel self-directed, self-managing, self-monitoring, and this type of coaching is often called cognitive coaching. In cognitive coaching, we're trying to coach uh, the educator in their thinking practices, thus the term cognitive coaching. And ultimately, if we do a really good job with our cognitive coaching, we will coach ourselves out of a job in this area because now we have taught this person to be very self-reflective, um, and self-managed in helping them move forward in their skills and knowledge as an educator. So to really summarize this instructional coaching continuum, if we start on the directive side, we have the calibrating. 
And oftentimes this is done with MTSS coaching where we see fidelity checks. Also your formal evaluation would be considered more of a calibrating in terms of the coaching continuum. Then we have the consulting. Again, typically someone comes in with expertise and is going to consult with the educator. So MTSS coaching, again, can be more consulting. Maybe they're having conversations about interventions to use. Uh, the tech integration coaching, again, what are maybe some great tech tools to use to help in moving my kids forward, as well as content area coaching. And then as we move further to the right, there's collaborating. Again, we have two individuals that are uh, sharing in the ideas and hoping to move forward in their skills and knowledge. And again, tech integration, content area um, can all be considered collaborating. And then furthest to the right would be, again, the cognitive coaching, where the coach coming in is really there to help the individual self-reflect, asking very reflective questions, um, avoiding any judgment. Um, so when I come in to do some coaching, I try to stay as far to the right as I can in terms of the reflection because I do want to build some autonomy in, in our educators, but I also understand there are times where I may have to slip into collaborating or the consulting because the individual just needs specific information that maybe I have more experience on. Um, but then I would also try to slip back into the reflecting uh, to help build again the self-reflective skills of that individual. So again, cognitive coaching, um, again, I'm on the far right on the reflective scale. It is not about evaluating. There may be, as I mentioned, a little bit of giving advice, so I might slip a little further to the left on that continuum if the individual needs some support. And maybe a little bit of collaborating. Maybe um, we want to share some ideas together and, and team teach your lesson plan a little bit. But ultimately, the cognitive coaching, the more reflective coaching, is hoping that we transform teachers through, through self-directed and very reflective practice. So as you think about the instructional coaching continuum, you may find that you have specific needs in specific areas. Maybe you need someone uh, to come in and do some more consulting work. Maybe you have someone that just wants to reflect on a particular lesson or, or reflect on, on how to plan for a lesson and you need someone to help facilitate that conversation. Those are all things that we would be happy to do at ESUA, so please let us know. ESU. It's what we do.